Welcome Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com. It's July 12th, 2018 and we're going to talk about a very shocking topic tonight. Lightning control. Um, of course, I've got my homeboy with me here tonight. Uh, everybody say hello to uh, Dominic Marama. What's up, homeboy? How's it going? Pretty good. Glad to have you here. Um, for those who don't know Dominic, uh, Dominic is my partner in crime at weathermodificationhistory.com. Um, I hope that you guys will check us out. And uh, of course, you can uh, hit the Facebook button up here and uh, give us a like on Facebook. Um, Dominic's constantly posting new material on uh, the Facebook page. And um, I'd greatly appreciate that. And um, before we get started, I'd like to always mention that, you know, you can support all of this free open source information by giving a one-time monthly donation on my Patreon or buy me a tea, because I quit coffee, um, on PayPal, and that'd be greatly appreciated as well. Um, so that brings us to the article for the evening, Thunderstruck, Chemtrails, Chaff, Lasers, Rockets, and Lightning Control. Now, a lot of people don't know much about, you know, freaking just the general idea that people can control the weather, um, you know, that lightning control is a thing. And uh, Dominic sent me a whole bunch of links um, over the last week, and we're going to kind of go through them. And I'm going to add to it, and we're going to break down this whole controlling lightning bolts. Um, so let's get started. Um, first up, this is one that was sent to me by Twitter. Um, there's something in the air. And this is about ship tracks and how they affect lightning. So for those of you who have never heard of a ship track, um, basically it's a chem chemtrail on steroids and uh they're over the ocean and what you have here is an article by um the earth of nasa's earth observatory um the connection between people and lightning is visible along two of the world's busiest shipping lanes in the indian ocean and south china sea the top map shows emissions of particles from ship exhaust orange Calculated from a database of maritime vessel traffic in the region. The second ma map shows the average density of lightning per year from tw 2005 to 2016, as detected by the Worldwide Lightning Location Network. The narrow light purple band indicates where increased lightning occurred. Turn on the image comparison tool and you can see where see areas of increased lightning coincide with shipping um, routes. So there's a big chemtrail connection to lightning. Um, most people would never have even considered this. Hell, I'd never heard of it till just recently. And uh, I got this from a tweet by Simon Koitsen Macher. Um, Map shows lightning follows shipping lanes. And it was dated July 8th, 2018. Fascinating stuff, um, but we're going to move along. So, uh, obviously, ship tracks affect lightning. Um, you know, the, the, the powers that be would call that inadvertent weather modification or accidental geoengineering. Um, but regardless, ship tracks are affecting lightning. Um, over on weathermodificationhistory.com, you can read about Project Skyfire or preventing forest fires with cloud seeding. You can see the link there, and here's some of the images from that. This is the official report, um, dated 1983, and this is from DTIC.mil. Um, and you can see that you know they had ground-based acetone burning silver iodide generators to do uh, cloud seeding to shut off lightning to prevent forest fires. And here's some of their old school apparatus, Skyfire generator showing from left to right the solution reservoir, framework, frame holder, windshield, and propane supply tank. Um, so this, you know, trying to steer lightning, trying to, you know, screw with lightning, 
long history to it. Um, we're going to get into some of the details that Dominic provided in just a second, but I wanted to throw this one out at you. Cloud ionizers, waste isolation uh, pro um, protection project uh, protects infrastructure with metal palm trees. Now these are cloud ionizers. Um, and you know, very few people have even heard of a cloud ionizer. Um, basically it's an antenna that, you know, puts off ions into the sky and uh, the articles right here, whip protects infrastructure with metal palm trees. And they got a nice little video to go along with it. It says in Tesla's application, he included some sketches. One of the sketches included something vaguely looked like a palm tree. So this is Tesla technology used to protect a nuclear waste facility from lightning bolts. Um, this is not science fiction. These are science facts. This is dated May 7th, 2018. And uh, if any of you guys have a good memory, you'll remember that the whip plant um, actually caught on fire. Um, I believe it was last year, the year before last. And now they're turning to um, cloud ionizers to, you know, protect us from lightning bolts and stuff. Um, but Dominic, this is your section right here, baby, baby. Um, and we're talking about chaff tonight. This is going to be a big portion of the article. And I threw this one in from my memory. Um, I got it from marines.mil. Performing electronic countermeasures in the United States and Canada. Um, and as you can see, this is what chaff looks like. So big flares, you know, shooting out of planes. You've probably seen it on a military movie or two. Um, you know, missiles on your six, you know, deploy chaff. And basically what they do is, you know, they throw off the heat signatures of heat seeking missiles. But chaff is a dangerous chemical mixture. And uh, I found this pretty fascinating. So they talk about surface electronic countermeasures, in flight in electronic countermeasures. Small scale ECM mission, large scale ECM mission, in flight ECM done by seven or more aircraft working as a unit. Chaff, let's give it a definition according to the military. Strips of frequency cut metal foil, wire, or metallized glass fibers used to reflect echoes and confuse for confusion purposes. It's usually dropped from aircraft or expelled from shells or rockets as a radar countermeasure. Rope, an, an element of chaff consisting of a long roll of metallic foil or wire designed for broad, low frequency response. Rope chaff, chaff that contains one or more elements of uh, rope elements. Big photo, that's your big photo right there. So those two are considered big photo. An unclassified general call sign for aircraft performing in-flight electronic countermeasures. Big photo used by civilian contractors during in-flight ECM when operator, operating under provisions of paragraph 2C. I suggest you guys read the article to read what 2C is all about. Um, ground photo, an unclassified general call sign for ground radar stations intentionally engaged in in-flight ECM. Buzzer, an unclassified brevity code. It stands for electronic jamming of descriptive, deceptive by, jamming or deception by ECM. Stream. An unclassified brevity code, it stands for chaff drop at short intervals. These appear on a radar scope as a continuous line of in interference. Burst chaff. An unclassified brevity code stands for chaff drop by at sufficiently long enough intervals, so they appear on radar scope as individual target returns. For the purposes of regulation, burst is further explained as single chaff drops of not more than three seconds, spaced not more less than 60, 90 seconds apart, with no more than four bursts 
in a 40 nautical mile radius other than chaff drops of other chaff drops um local frequency clearance and the clearance for ecm in a spe specific area so they have to actually call norad um to get permission to do this sort of stuff the clearance must be coordinated with local agencies concerned united states u.s uh referred to in this regulations includes the continental united states ecm area state of alaska ecm area state of hawaii ecm area and the island of guam ecm area and the island of puerto rico ecm so then they have this this is kind of fascinating restricted ecm geographic locations you are not allowed to drop chaff near white sands missile range fort oaxaca fort oaxaca is an air force base with no runway and the reason why is because that's where all the spies and the digital spies and the cyber assassins digital ninjas hackers hang out and they don't want you interrupting their radio frequency emissions Point Magoo in California, another spot um, that is highly uh, regulated. Uh, Patrick Coordinator Air Force Base, uh, Florida. Eglund Air Force Base, Florida. Um, Nevada, Utah, west of 111 degrees. And Idaho, south of 44 degrees north. And then within 200 uh, nautical miles of Guam and 200 nautical miles of the island of Hawaii. So apparently there are no fly zones for ECM or dropping chaff. And that's because they'll interfere with their radar emissions, yada, yada, yada. So um, now we get into the section. This is straight from Dominic. Um, Dominic, are you following along on the article? Can you read yep. this one? Yeah, um, so for, um, yeah. So I guess once I started looking into chaff is how I started, and then I realized once I was looking into it, aside from the radar jamming and everything else that they they use with it, they actually use it to to modify uh, severe thunderstorms and lightning. And then at that point, I was like, okay, I'm gonna start researching into that little tidbit of information and see what they actually have on chaff being able to affect the weather, and not just for radar purposes alone. And I just simply started at the American Meteorological Society, their definition for lightning suppression. And uh, uh, it says, procedures to prevent the uh, occurrence of lightning. Seeding below cloud base with 10 centimeter fiber chaff in a Colorado study resulted in corona, uh, corona discharges that caused a discharging current to flow within developing or active thunderstorms. So electric fields below the thunderstorm seeded with chaff decayed much faster than electric fields below non-seeded storms. And chaff seeding of existing thunderstorms greatly reduced cloud to ground flashes compared to non-seeded storms. So they're pretty much essentially saying that the chaff is, is stopping the severity of the storm and, and the lightning from, from uh, you know, going off on the ground to the cr cloud area, right? It yeah. might be going above it. Um, but it's but there's less of it going on between the cloud layer and the and the ground. And and this is freaking news to me because I you know I had never considered the fact that the chaff could be used for weather modification at all, let alone that it would be used for interrupting lightning. Um, so that's a fascinating read right there. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, New York Times weather modification future. Uh, you want to read that? Oh, I got it massive sure. jet flying overhead go ahead nope. and, and just to make <clears throat> a point on that uh suppression lightning suppression by uh the american meteorological society they also say in the next sentence there that they uh use um real evidence suggests that chaff releases may result in or here we go here um approaches to use lasers to discharge lightning in an overhead cloud in order to divert the flash from sh striking people or highly sensitive equipment on the ground so in that reference by the American Meteorological Society, not only do they mention chaff um, affecting lightning, but they also mention um, uh, lasers as well in that same definition. Yeah, so we're going to get to lasers before the end of this video, so please stay tuned. This is some pretty epic evidence, um, epic stuff. So I'm going to, oh, good Lord, I've been attacked by a beetle. Bad, <laughs> bad beetle, bad beetle. 
Um, the the next one up, New York Times weather modification future. This is from 1978. There are also indications that by injecting into thunderclouds metalized chaff like that used in jamming radio signals, it's possible to reduce lightning bolts. Environmental warfare is another distinct threat from our fellow beings. One day soon we may learn how to direct typhoons, trigger earthquakes and tidal waves and microwaves that hurt humans. Um, you know, this is something that's been talked about for quite some time. Um, your next paper up is National Science Foundation Weather Modification 7th Annual Report from 1965. You want to read that one? Sure, yeah. Uh, experiments have also been conducted to check the feasibility of discharging a thundercloud by a corona current generated at the sharp points of chaff needles. These were dispersed from a C-47 aircraft in areas below clouds where the electric field exceeded 30,000 volts per meter. The aircraft was equipped with the two cylindrical field mills which recorded the three components of the electric field. In the conduct of the experiment, the aircraft would fly below a thunderstorm during the developing stage and record the electric field. In the field sh if the field strength surpass a, va a value of about 30,000 volts per meter, the aircraft would re retrace its previous pass and disperse the chaff. During the consecutive runs back and forth, the influence of the chaff seeding on the electric field was recorded. In one series of five tests, three out of five test flights showed that the corona discharge started as soon as the chaff was dropped from the plane. So pretty much as soon as they <laughs> dropped that chaff out of the plane, it was already having an effect on the, the storm and, and limiting its its uh, severity, right? So pretty crazy stuff. Pretty pretty crazy stuff and good finds, man. Page 49 on that document. Um, this, is, this is something that's new to me. I'm sure it's new to my audience as well. Um, NOAA National Severe Storms Laboratory 1997 by Ken Howard. Chaff released from fighter planes may suppress lightning and thunderstorms. Two links on that. Um, and you can see, however, the radar uh, data, data do reveal that several extensive clouds of chaff were initiated over flight restricted military ranges in the southwest of Phoenix. The prevailing flow advected the chaff clouds to the north and east. Convective storms uh, that occurred are likely to be affected by dispersing chaff clouds and were characterized by little to no CG lightning. Um, there are no data available regarding what either the in cloud lightning character of the storms on this day or the technical specifications of the chaff being used by military aircraft, anti electronic warfare systems. However, it is hypothesized that this case of severe but low lightning convective storms resulted in inadvertent lightning suppression. There's that word again inadvertent, meaning accidental, you know. Um, they accidental, accidentally did lightning suppression over South Central Arizona due to an extended period of numerous chaff uh, releases over military ranges. We have compiled a substantial database of radar, satellite, and sounding data that will allow us to investigate the likelihood more thoroughly and rigor rigorously. Um, and that's exactly what they've done. Um, the next one up is Noah Magazine Disarming a Thunderstorm. Roll that beautiful bean footage, Dom. So, yeah, the, okay, uh, reading the article there? Yeah. Yeah, so tiny fibers, so this yeah, is the Noah Magazine. Tiny fibers released in the thunderstorms give man the ability to suppress lightning. Environmental research laboratory scientists believe that after testing the technique this summer, Metallized nylon fibers called chaff were dispersed beneath thunderstorms in northeastern Colorado during a six-week experiment conducted by the Atmospheric Physics and Chemistry La Laboratory. The seeding consist consistently neutralized storm electrical fields, suggesting that the possibilities of suppressing lightning for such purposes as forest fire prevention is at hand. Um, and there was photos there of the actual article. Um, disarming, and they actually have a nice little graphic with the uh, cloud, um, kind of a diagram that shows the positive ion stream and, and the chaff in the air in between the two clouds and, and how it kind of breaks up the storm in the middle there. Yeah, let me boil that up real quick. 
and you can see it right there um great work on the photos bro man um yeah so they they basically um you know for rain to fall you need three things you need dust you need water and you need electricity and thunderstorms are obviously filled with that you know the dust rubs together that creates static electricity eventually that static electricity wants to ground itself that's what lightning is and they're trying to interrupt that process by introducing electrical you know electrically charged metal particles oh but wait they also said nylon um consider this whenever they're doing chaff or ecm over your state you're breathing those metal particles and those plastic particles um you know it's coming down in the rain it's in the air that you're breathing um and you know i understand the need to practice for warfare purposes but do you have to do it over my state um it's just in pure insanity so positively charged ground negative charged cloud zap um and they're trying to interrupt that by introducing a positive ion stream uh produced by chaff and you can see the chaff right there this big bulky area um pretty crazy stuff man excellent find on that one um so let's go back to the story um next up we have a couple patents google patent weather control by artificial means if we go to the next article actually the noah magazine it'll tie this in nicely beforehand because it actually shows the guy casimir in the article um chaff photos by essa research laboratories there all right this one right here chaff photos by esa laboratories yep 17 yeah, so through 21 let's see if we can bring that up real quick so this shows Casimir in there and doing the experiments with the 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 lightning ball there, whatever, however they whatever they use that for. Yeah. And then that's the patent there from 1964, um, titled "Weather Control by Artificial Means." Just crazy. I couldn't believe I found it too. Once I uh, went out to Google Patents and searched the guy's name, that's the only way I could find it. I couldn't find it by searching in like weather or chaff or anything like that. But his name brought it up. Sure enough. All right. So is this our guy right here? Yeah, that's him. So that's Casimir. Right there. And what do we have here? Is that the chaff? That's the chaff. Ugh. Looks like metal fur. Yeah. I, I, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't yeah, like it a bit. Um, so here's a quote. In pre preliminary experiments, chaff packages upper right. That's the fur. Uh, were released from planes into thunderheads. The radar scope photo photo photograph shows two streams of chaff packages dropped 10 seconds apart from research aircraft. The tests indicate that lightning suppression by chaff seeding is a sound procedure. And there's the two streams of chaff. Um, nasty stuff, man. All right, so you said 17 and 21, so let's scroll down to 21 real quick. What do we have on here? Are we sure on that 21? Cause it's, uh, a it's probably just the chaff photo there that I had okay. mentioned. That's just the full article 17 there. 17 to 21, yeah. So that's the full article. Check it out, read it. It's a uh, fact. It's weather modification history. Um, U.S. Air Force cloud seeding with fibers, 1975 video. This is an AP video. I'm not going to show it in my video. We found out the hard way. The last time we tried to show something from the Associated Press, they were real pricks about it. So come to climateviewer.com, read the article, watch the video yourself. Um, starts about 30 seconds in. You're going to see some stuff about chaff. Um, environmental protection, DOD management issues related to chaff. Um, boy, this is a lengthy one. Um, let's just do this one. A scientist formerly with NOAA who performs weather research from the University of Oklahoma estimated it would have to have taken more than 200 billion shaft particles to create a radar picture taken in Arizona 1997, page 11. 
So let's go look at that on page 11. That's just the quote, I think. Okay, I didn't know if there was a photo there. The, the point of this article here is, above it too, it says, radar observations show that chaff can spread over several hundred hundred several hundreds of miles and stay in the air for up to a day so right, even if you, can, you know exercises out at air force bases and it's you know they're not necessarily in your area this stuff can stay up uh in in the air for a day and it can travel hundreds of miles as yeah per, and, it's as gonna per goal. and it's gonna spread everywhere there actually is an image there National Weather Service radar image of chaff plumes over, over southern Arizona and southwestern New Mexico, October 8th, 1997. That's those dark black uh, lines you're seeing there. So, um, yeah, according to NOAA scientist officials, chaff can easily be identified under clear skies. But it can give false readings under other weather conditions and could thus impair the ability to make accurate forecasts. Chaff may be interpreted as precipitation and in some cases could result in inaccurate warnings of severe weather. Chaff could therefore interfere with missions that rely on accurate weather forecasts. One NOAA technical report describes chaff's, chaff's interference with normal weather observation data in at least two space shuttle launch attempts. Interesting facts here. Good, good to know, man. Yeah. And so, so and so the actual one of the crazy points is they say it takes 200 billion chaff particles, 200 billion, to create a radar picture. And that was just the one radar picture there from 1997. And then later on down here in the links, uh, we have an actual image of it on radar there from NOAA, yeah, which, which is our next link coming up. Yeah, um, weather.gov. Yeah, so to point, drive the point home, you know, if, if it's showing up on radar, radar, that's billions upon billions of, of chaff needles that they're putting into the into the atmosphere, which is, is significant to be able to see it on radar. So. Yeah, so right here, um, I've got the article up. Uh, National Weather Service Wellington meteorologists had their hands full during an afternoon on April 22nd, 2016, as several waves of showers and thunderstorms moved across North and South Carolina. Whoa, now I'm getting too close to home for me. Um, I live in Sumter, South Carolina. The strongest thunderstorm of the day dropped hail up to three quarters of an inch in diameter. I remember this. I have video of the hail that day. Interesting fact. Along with over three inches of rain, another interesting aspect of the event is that it first appeared in an area... Alright, where's the freaking shaft, dude? How do we figure this out? Brief word on radar. Another item that can reflect radar waves is chaff. The name is given to tiny glass fibers covered in aluminum metal. Shout out to you chemtrail people. Glass fibers covered in aluminum burn up aluminum oxide. Developed by its British and German in Germans independently during World War II, its purpose is to confuse enemy radar and make it difficult to detect aircraft during wartime. It's dropped by airplanes and spreads widely with the wind. It as it falls, chaff is often used offshore during local military training exercises. A National Weather Service meteorologist note its appearance on radar several dozen times a year off of Cape Fear. More information on, about chaff available here. Clicking it! Ah, oh, you don't want to play with me, do you? It says that we should not go there. Proceed. Page not found. Typical. And guess what? When I went to go check my Wayback Machine earlier today, um, OpenDNS was blocking it. Go figure. URL not found. So it was deleted and it didn't come back up. Let's go to 2013 actually. Aha! Let's just check that out. What used to be there? It's a Word doc. Is this going to show up? Characteristics of chaff. Gonna have to add a link to that in the article. 
chaff characteristics there's a little chaff cartridge fascinating stuff chaff ejection here's what that fuzzy stuff looks like let's blow that up for everybody here square felt chaff looks like metal fur because it's made out of ni nylon yada yada nylon and metal main charge booster charge potassium nitrate potassium perchlorate boron what stands out for me high temperatures policies and regulations environmental effects of chaff looks like i'm going to do a follow-up video on this um but regardless let me uh bookmark that in my thunderstruck folder and we'll come back to that at a later date everything is on wayback machine shout out to archive.org love you mean it um but as you can see here what do we got base rate or reflection where's the chaff chaff appears here and the radar reflectivity so that's all chaff is that wilmington yeah that's wilmington north carolina wow so luckily for me i have the base reflectivity on climateviewer.org as well as the normal radar that you see on the television so you can go to um, climateviewer.org and bring that up and you can see chaff um, obviously with the base re uh, radar reflectivity in fact I'll show you where that is real quick just so anybody wants to play along at home go to alerts go to precipitation and you'll see right here I have two different versions I've got the one you see on TV and then I've got the base reflectivity and as you can see they don't look the same um let me go here to make this black scroll over here I'll turn off the base reflectivity this is what you see on TV this is with base reflectivity pretty crazy difference right and there's your chef <laughs> see wow that was just a coincidence right so this is what your your national weather forecast shows you on tv this is the unfiltered with base reflectivity it picks up everything um i see chaff on this stuff all the time um and now you've seen it too what is this big white line disappears bring up base reflectivity there it is so is it chaff looks like it to me um so this stuff's burned all over america big problem um in this video and i'm gonna let this guy say it in his own words because i ain't scared Northern of this california video. Uh, we've got the region is drop craft flying through the rain that is not snow believe it or not military aircraft flying through the region is dropping chaff small bits of aluminum sometimes it's made of plastic or uh, even uh, metallicized uh, metallicized paper products but it's used as an anti-radar issue and obviously they're up there practicing now they won't confirm that but i was in the marine corps for many years and i'll tell you right now that's what it is uh 50 in medford right now 48 in so that's straight from you know a meteorologist's mouth you know he's like hey look you know this that you're seeing right here this is actually chaff and it's coming from the pacific coast it's coming from the u.s navy maybe air force but regardless that ain't rain um that is metal particles showing up on our radars and by radars um you can see all of those radars right here on climateviewer.org um, come down here to next red Doppler radars. Um, I also have the Canadian SIGMET radars, terminal Doppler weather radars, um, and the joint surveillance radars or ASR4s. And as you can see, we got lots of radars in America. Um, and that's what they're picking these up on is these all of these Doppler radars um because obviously metal interacts with you know the electromagnetic frequencies coming out of there that's pretty nasty looking 
Um, wonder if it's a chaff. It's a chaff. <laughs> wow, dude. Look at the difference. This is your national weather forecast. There's rain down here, but we've got chaff up here coming off the coast in the exact same spot that was in that video. Um, not a surprise to me. And then back to that Project Skyfire thing we mentioned earlier. The only difference is, um, you know, the, the one I'm focused on earlier was about cloud seeding and Project Skyfire using cloud seeding to suppress rainfall and uh, thus, you know, interrupt thunderstorms. You want to read this one, dude? Yeah, I have actually. Yeah, I, I know that they started um, Skyfire with silver iodine, I believe, right? This is what they were do using originally, and then they, they, I guess they started using chaff to see what else they could, you know, make happen, right? That's probably what happened. Yeah, yeah. Chaff, if leakage current in a cloud can be increased by the uh, ice crystals produced by artificial seeding. The dispersal of long chaff needles into thunder cloud should have the same effect. Moreover, in the latter case, the experiment is not complicated and the, an increase in the concentrations of ice cloud. Experiments of this kind were started by the U.S. Army Atmospheric Science Lab, Casimir, there's that name again, and Wigmeyer, Wigman, 1965 and now have continued um, in the APCL and ESSA we mentioned them earlier um, laboratory experiments have shown that the onset of corona discharge on a 10 centimeter long chaff fiber is about 30 kilovolts per meter um, which is about 20 times lower than the field necessary to initiate lightning discharges uh, yada 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 if such chaff were dispersed in a large column of a cloud of, uh, about five pounds of it containing 10 fibers uh, would produce 10 ampere corona current in a field of 70 kilovolts per meter this current would be adequate to counterbalance the current output of the average thunderstorm approximately 3 ampere and should therefore suppress lightning. So even back in the 70s, Project Skyfire, um, while they were doing cloud seeding, they were also talking about using chaff to shut down the lightning. Um, wow. So chaff everywhere. Um, chaff is metal coated in nylon, plastics, paper. Uh, you're breathing it. You think that's air you're breathing? Um, check again. This brings us to our final section, lasers and rockets. Now, this is some fascinating stuff. Um, controlling lightning at Rutgers University 2013. A first conference on, wait for it, laser-based weather control. W LWC 2011, LWC 2013. Um, you know, they have, the fact that they have a laser-based weather control conference I want to be there. Um, so hopefully me and Dominic will be able to go to the next one and uh, ask a whole lot of questions. That'd be great. Um, maybe we'll set up a GoFundMe for that when we find out when the next one is. And I'll gladly go up there and ask a whole bunch of shocking questions about lasers. Um, as highlighted by the success of the first conference on laser-based weather control in 2013, Ultra short lasers launched in the atmosphere have emerged as a promising prospective tool for weather modification and climate studies. Such prospects include lightning control and laser assisted condensation, as well as striking, sim striking similarities. Gotta love the humor in that. Between the nonlinear and optical propagation of natural phenomena like rogue waves and climate bifurcations. Although these new perspectives triggered an increased interest in activity in many groups of the world, highly interdisciplinary nature of the subject limited its development due to the need to enhance contracts between laser and atmospheric physics, chemists, electrical engineers, meteorologists, and climatologists. Further strengthening this link is precisely the aim of the second conference on laser and weather, laser, weather, and climate in Geneva, damn, I need a passport, 
gathering the most prominent specialists of the, both sides of the tutorial talks uh, for discussions as well as networking. So, hey, let's all hang out and go to the laser-based weather control conference because that's fun. And there you can see right there, third conference is 2015. So let's see, 2011, 2013, 2015. What happened? Where's the fourth one at? Um, we'll have to find out when the next one is. Um, I'm sure if I dug right now, I probably could find out, but I'll do that after the video. <laughs> Regardless, uh, I want to be there. So I previously did an article on this called Heart Project Nimbus and the Fire of the Gods. It was about how DARPA was involved in all of this. I wrote it in 2014. Pentagon launches plan to master lightning. Um, you can read all about that. Uh, details right here. Um, it was called Project Nimbus, and that was what my article was about. Um, and I called it DARPA Project Nimbus and the Fire of the Gods. No, I don't want your notifications. Um, and, you know, the, the original article they linked to on sphere.com has been deleted. I'll dig that up later. But another somewhat straightforward application of lightning not as not mentioned as a part of the DARPA project is the possibility of creating a lightning gun, a weapon that shoots bolts of electricity. And that's exactly what they have done. Um, I actually have photos of the lightning gun. Um, I should have put them in the article, but you know, I spent an hour and a half putting this together before the video tonight. Uh, maybe I'll add it later after the video. DARPA Request for Lightning Research Corporate Partners Project Nimbus. Um, I mirrored this to climateviewer.org. It's from my hard drive. Um, this is not available on the internets any longer. But you can see right here, DARPA Broad Agency Announcement Nimbus 2009 and what they plan to do. Um, and basically they're saying, hey, we want to get people involved on this. Uh, you know, we will pay you um, if you will get involved, you know. And description of funding opportunities, soliciting research and development proposals for the underlying physics of lightning. Proposed research should investigate innovative approaches and enable revolutionary and fundamental advances in atmospheric and ionospheric science relating to my lightning. Oh, by the way, we'd love to make a fucking weapon out of it. Um, so there you go, funding opportunities and all that. Um, you know, DARPA wants, you know, all your lightning are belong to DARPA. So, um, a couple other articles on that. You can see the original DARPA page. Um, I backed it up. It's obviously been deleted. Um, don't play not found with me, boy. DARPA wants all your lightning. That was funny. <laughs> yeah, all your lightning are belong to DARPA. So let me, uh, it's, it's kicked me to a 404 page, even on archive.org. That's just straight up dirty. Let's back it up. So here you go. Here's the original DARPA page on Project Nimbus. Um, and you can see uh, Nimbus is a fundamental science program trying to figure out lightning associated effects such as x-rays and its ionospheric components to better protect troops, ordnance, and other military assets. This program yields insights into other high voltage, high current electromagnetic phenomena. And they got a, a photo right here that I found pretty interesting. Um, what's that? You know, is what I said to myself when I saw it. So I had to go look that up. University of Florida, Florida Lightning Research Group, Rocket Triggered Lightning. Um, and let's see if their page is still active. It is, and that's where the photo is from, University of Florida Lightning Research Group. And what they're doing right there is that they're actually firing a rocket into the sky that has a wire behind it. And you can see this in this video here. That's right, that was a straight lightning bolt. This is not something that happens in nature. Right there. 
So that's what it looks like. Um, if you ever see a straight lightning bolt, know that it's either guided by wire or guided by a laser beam. Um, that's the only way to straighten out a lightning bolt. And that's how people can control lightning. Um, and that's what this is all about. You know, if we can't just shut it off using chaff, if we can't nullify it with cloud ionizers, hell, let's control it with laser beams and rockets. Um, so that's a pretty fascinating video. Check that out. New laser technology developed by University of a U UA, is that Alabama? Is it Alaska? What is it? Could divert uh, lightning strikes. Oh, it's Arizona. Uh, so University of Arizona could divert lightning strikes. Um, dressed laser aimed at clouds may be key to inducing rain lightning and we're, we're not mentioning how lasers can be used to make rain this is all about lightning but yeah um lasers can paint clouds in grid patterns to ionize the clouds to help induce rain like i said rainfall is dust water vapor and electricity so that ionization is the electrical part it helps the dust stick to the water um, they can use la lasers to make it rain, but we're more, more focused on the lightning at this point. Um, and this is what a dressed laser looks like. You have one laser beam and then you got another laser beam that dresses it or actually wraps around it. Um, that's something they want to use. And the big boy terawatt laser beam shot in clouds provokes lightning strikes. Researchers generate filaments that are too short-lived to trigger a real lightning strike. According to French and German scientists, the fast pulses sent from the laser will be able to provoke thunder strikes on demand. And this is from a laser called Terra Mobile. Um, and you can see the information on that right here. Terawatt laser beam shot in clouds provokes lightning strike. So there you have it, people. Um, epic freaking links man i appreciate you finding those tonight man i i had no clue about the whole chaff you know being used for for thunder protection thunder mitigation whatever they want to call it um yeah i was familiar with the laser beams and all of that sort of stuff um the cloud ionizers um the ship tracks thing was new to me um completely yeah, new yeah, I'd never heard that before. I mean, this guy just tweeted it out a couple of days ago. And I was like, got to put that in there. Um, Project Skyfire, already on weathermodificationhistory.com. Check it out. Um, please remember to check out weathermodificationhistory.com. As you can see uh, at the very bottom of the page. That's where me and Dominic hang out. I uh, passed all the comments. Um... You know, you can get in touch with me or Dominic, you know, just by clicking the links here. Uh, you know, these are our individual websites um, and links to us right here and here. Um, but, you know, please link to weathermodificationhistory.com. I've included an embed code right here at the bottom. It'll let you use this image. It's our logo. Um, and it links to weather modification history. All you got to do is click on it, hit copy and post it on your website it's ready to go um so that's your way of you know linking back to us showing some link love and helping people see the big picture because you know you can't shake a stick at all of this history it starts in 1880 1836 and goes all the way to present through project skyfire right there um and a whole lot more barium clouds in space uh, geoengineering, weather warfare, uh, the list just goes on and on and on. And please check out uh, Dominic's special section, the Weather Modification News Vault, um, where you can see 776, count them, newspapers uh, that he has beautifully recreated. Tesla's tidal wave to make war impossible, and you can just flip through them. Uh, how to control weather electric shocks for clouds boy that's right on topic right there um and that's been dated 1912 everybody um so yeah please come over to weathermodificationhistory.com 
check out all these links. They are science fact, um, as opposed nope. to all of the BS you're going to hear everywhere else. What are you going to say? It's, a, it's amazing how many articles we can pull up with regards to suppressing lightning and creating lightning. And then you look at, and this is like way back in the day, right? And you look at today, and there's still many, many news stories from meteorologists and, and the news talking about how, you know, many of the forest fires are started by lightning strikes still today. And it's like, if you guys have mastered this technology, I'm not saying we should be using it, but if you've mastered it so well, you know, why aren't you actually do, using it for good today if you're you're so keen on using it for good, right? Yeah, but at the same time, let's just remember that despite all the claims of, of weather control, they really have no control. Um, this is all experiments. Exactly, yeah. That's so, true. I mean, everything they're doing is an experiment. Um, it will continue to be experiments for quite some time to come because we simply don't understand enough about what we're doing. Um, that's a great one right there. Sky losing its blue as some cloudiness alters its appearance. 1927. No, there were no... Chemtrails are completely new. Um, never happened before. But in 1927, cloudiness was r causing the skies to lose their blue. I mean, dude, the, the stuff you find is amazing. I, I love you mean it. I appreciate your hard work. Um... Everybody, you know, give Dominic a round of applause because he deserves it. Um, thank you for coming on the show tonight, man. Um, I hope to do this every Thursday. Obviously not next Thursday. Um, I'm going to be going to uh, the beach for a week and I'm going to blow off some steam. But we will come back hard and we will continue to, to keep at it. Um, so, you know... Guys, support our work. It's at weathermodificationhistory.com. Come over to Facebook. Like us on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash weathermodificationhistory, all one word. Um, and, you know, spread the word because the bottom line is there's a lot of people out there pushing a lot of hokey and they don't want you to be educated. And the purpose of what we're doing here is to arm you with the truth, facts, to history, so that history does not repeat itself. Um, and that's why I partner with Dominic. I see him as someone special doing, you know, unique work uh, like myself. And that's why we partnered up to make this website. And I hope to continue to do these videos um, and eventually talk him into doing his own show. Nudge, nudge. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I'm getting his feet wet by dragging his ass on here. So regardless, you know, you did a great job, man. And um, I appreciate you sending me those links. It was an eye opener for me. I'm sure it was for many people in the audience. And, uh, you know, this information is powerful. So, you know, with that, you know, with uh, great power comes great responsibility. And what I ask of you is that, you know, Use that information wisely. Uh, get educated. Share this information with other people. And when you do that, remember to attack ideas, not people. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from you all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to climateviewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember, it would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.